I've just come back from Six Flags, now feeling like the Flash, because I've sped past the standby lines all day at the parks thanks to the Flash Pass system. You might be wondering how to conquer the Flash Pass too, and in this video, I'll break it down for you, so you too can feel just as fast as Wally West. The first thing you're probably thinking when it comes to obtaining the Six Flags Flash Pass is the cost and the tier-based system. You have the Standard, the Premium, and the Ultimate. The Standard is equal to the actual wait time of the ride, but you don't have to wait in line. Just enjoy the park. The Premium has a wait time that's half of the actual wait time. The Ultimate gets you 90% off the actual wait time. You'll wait a measly 6 minutes if a ride has an hour wait. I'd just like to note that on less busy days, the Flash Pass wait could almost be equal to the time it takes you to walk from one ride to the next. I'll go over the value of the Flash Pass later in this video, but there's clearly a cost decision to make. In the end, it may come down to your budget or necessities. How to use the Flash Pass One pain point question you may have when it comes to the Flash Pass is, how the heck do I use it? Luckily, everything you need is within the Six Flags app. Simply just scroll down to find the Flash Pass section within the app. Gone are the days of the Keybot or the watch-like device. It's all within your hands now. You can purchase the Flash Pass online or through the app. And since I used the same email as my login for the app, it automatically connected after I had purchased the Flash Pass. If you have any issues, go to the Activate Services section of the app and enter the ticket or confirmation number. With the standard Flash Pass, I could start making my selections of available attractions right when the park opens. You simply select a ride you want to wait for, hit the button, and get a confirmation of your selection. A timer will commence, and when ready, the prompt will turn green and a QR code will appear. Look for the flash pass sign surrounding the queue and make your way through the pathway until you meet a ride attendant who will scan the QR code, and then you're good to go. You can then make an additional selection once your flash pass has been scanned. On busier days, making a new selection could be essential, as there may still be a bit of waiting once you get past the attendant. Use this to your advantage to eat up the flash pass clock as you wait. Cost and value. So you've already spent $60 to $100 on a park ticket, and now you're wondering if an additional flash pass add-on is worth it. Let's figure this out. On my visit on a Saturday in May, the flash pass tiers cost $65 for the standard, $90 for the premium, and $160 for the ultimate. However, it can cost more on days that are expected to be busy, with the standard reaching $80, the premium $110, and the ultimate all the way up to $180. The problem is figuring out how many attractions you can hit up with the flash pass versus just waiting in a regular standby line. I worked up a potentially flawed spreadsheet to try and guesstimate the number of rides a park goer could have. It's a hypothetical situation where each ride has a one hour wait on a park day that runs from 10am to 8pm, and it does not account for breaks or meals. I determined that standby riders can get 9 rides a day, while the standard flash pass can get 17, the premium 24, and the ultimate 30. These numbers accounted for walking between attractions and slight waits after getting past the attendant. Furthermore, it also accounts for picking the next ride on the Flash Pass app the moment after the current ride was scanned by the attendant. While it's ideal to make a bunch of speed runs on a lot of attractions with the Ultimate, one thing to keep in mind is you're still at the mercy of ride dispatch rates and a little bit of waiting past the attendant. Six Flags is known for poor operations, and waiting for multiple trains after the attendant is possible since one train operations are common. With that said, one of the benefits to the Flash Pass is that you're not limited to the amount of selections of a particular ride like you get at Disney. Furthermore, you're not making Flash Pass selections for a time later in the day. The Flash Pass clock runs the moment you make the selections. Warnings It appears that the Flash Pass system lags behind present updates for the park. For instance, the Flash Pass app claimed that Pandemonium was closed. However, the ride was running and taking guests right in front of me. An attendant claimed that the system can lag behind on status updates anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. I believe you can still make fast pass selections on rides that are down, so give it a try or ask an attendant for help. One thing I noticed throughout the day was the official wait times on the Six Flags app did not correlate to the wait times shown on the Flash Pass section of the app. For example, Aquaman Splashdown on the Six Flags app was listed at 15 minutes, but 5 minutes on the Flash Pass app. 
Batman had a difference of 25 and 5 minutes, and this continued for every other attraction available. Fortunately, this worked to my advantage, as the wait times were significantly shorter on the flash pass side of things, making the standard pass quite the bargain, when I really should have been waiting longer. The app itself lags. You're dependent on Wi-Fi and cellular service, so be prepared to face long loading screens and occasional app crashes. I received this white loading screen of death numerous times when I needed to quickly show my QR code to an attendant. If this happens, just close and restart the app. Another warning I'd like to note is the flash pass is practically ineffective within the first two hours of the park opening. On my visit, it took until after lunchtime before crowds started filling in, and there were small waits making the flash pass unnecessary. However, with that said, it just shows you that you can have a successful day at Six Flags without the flash pass on certain days. With the app crashes, the delays, and high costs, you might be thinking I'm ready to stamp the flash pass as a failure. However, I do believe there is some value to the pass if you're visiting a Six Flags park you've never been to and you feel the pressure to ride everything. If it's within your budget and you're going on a day that's expected to be busy, then go for it. Despite a few minor glitches, I still felt confident in using the system. And as the day went on, I felt more and more like the Flash.